hello i'm richard ridge and welcome to broadway beat where we bring you the very best of what the new york theatre scene has to offer this week it's something toxic something royal and something academic we'll drop by new world stages to meet the cast of the new musical the toxic avenger which is based on the nineteen eighty five cult film it features a book by joe di pietro music and lyrics by bon jovi's david bryan and it's directed by tony award winner john rando We'll also visit with two-time Tony Award winner Matthew Broderick and the cast of Roundabout Theatre Company's new production of Christopher Hampton's play, The Philanthropist, which is directed by David Grinley. But let's start things off at the opening night of director Neil Armfield's new production of Eugene Ionesco's Exit the King, which is playing at the Barrymore Theatre. We once again catch up with the cast, which is led by Academy Award winners Jeffrey Rush and Susan Sarandon, Tony Award winner Andrea Martin, and Lauren Ambrose. Exit the King is a hilarious and poignant comedy about the megalomaniacal ruler, King Berenger, played by Jeffrey Rush, whose incompetence has left his country in near ruin. Despite the efforts of Queen Marguerite, played by Susan Sarandon, and the other members of the court to convince the king he has only 90 minutes left to live, he refuses to relinquish any control. I'm not sure. He feels fine. Don't you? Well, the old twinge here and there. It's nothing anyway. I'm starting to feel much better. He says he feels better. Who's he? I can even say I feel extremely better. You are going to die in an hour and a half. <laughs> you are going to die at the end of the play. It's, what was it, 1962, I think it was written. I, it's just, it's a, it's, it's not set in a particular time, and it's, and it has a style. This, this production and the play have a style. These people, these people don't exist in the real world, you know. This isn't Glen Gary, Glen Ross, or, or, you know, Long Day's Journey or something. They're creatures inside the king's mind. As he's as his lights are going out, as he's drifting toward the end, and so the normal rules of reality don't apply to any of them. You know what I mean? Um, but it makes but it makes it makes it great fun physically. It makes it uh, you know to find the style, to find the to find that sort of Marx Brothers. Uh, and then, boom, it becomes suddenly something happens that's, that's beautiful and sad. And it's like, and the audience is taken totally by surprise, I hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we spent a good time, a good long time just looking at the words, looking at the text, um, going back to the French, going looking at other, for me, like, that was really important to look at other translations, look at the French, look at everything as a, um, just to get a sense of the world that we're in and, and a sense of the language and, like, how to seize the language, that kind of thing, yeah. You know, this is a great ensemble. I mean, they're all, you're all stars, but there's this wonderful mix in this show, which you all play together so beautifully as an ensemble. Do you yeah. feel the same way? Yeah, it's really starting to gel now. I, I'm really looking for. I'm glad that we're finally open and that now we can, like, chill and not be rehearsing every day and just sort of start playing and have fun. And, and I think I think that'll be that'll be really great for this play because it really is like a troop of clowns and actors on the stage so I think I think uh, I think the time will serve us well so. existence and death are just words ideas patterns we create for ourselves that once you understand that nothing can hurt you be that great <coughs> eternal question what is it what is that there is no possible answer is the answer itself it is your very being, barking, scattering, abandon yourself to the endless wonder and chaos, and you too will be endless, infinite, be astonished, be dazzled, everything is strange. You know, 
I want to say this. Susan and I and Lauren Ambrose and I, Susan Saran and Lauren Ambrose and I were all talking tonight and saying, we have not gone out to dinner together. We haven't socialized. We really have worked all day. We go home and our, learn our lines. It's really been about the play. Um, it's, I, I think, just what, what do I want to say? It's been a real dedication to the piece to make it um, alive and make it accessible to Broadway audiences. So a lot had to go into it. And now we'll have some fun and party, but it's really been about the work. How well did you know the play before you auditioned for this? I didn't know the play at all, and um, I think I knew Rhinoceros by Inesco and the Chairs, but I didn't know this play. It's not very often done, and now I love it. I just love it. Really, doing this play, it, it, being an actress in the play, um, feels like doing Shakespeare. You know how the lines just kind of support you when you're doing this, and you think, oh, my God, millions of actors have done this before, and I just, it just feels like you're so embraced by... Um, what's come before, and it has the same kind of feeling. Um, it's look, the play is extremely vivid. UNESCO uh, cut large sections of it himself. We op we looked at all the things he cut. There were some things that we decided to put back in, and some things that we decided to leave out. Um, he wrote the play as one continuous arc without an interval, but he'd written this great interval line, uh, which is, we know where we are, right, at, right in the middle of the play. We know where we're heading, uh, we, we're not quite there yet, but we know where we're heading. Perfect line to bring the curtain down on. And, um, uh, and after that, because the second act is, is much more lyrical, it's still funny, but at the second act, you know, he ends up in the wheelchair and, and his, his kind of swift, what we call the cascade of symptoms. Of, of a dying person, all get all get dramatized in, in clowning terms. Um, actually, all night that's happening. But the but from the second half on, he's in the wheelchair and and he's starting to lose his memory and starting to lose his recognition. And um, it, it it formed two parts very beautifully. But one of the challenges was that we wrote it for an Australian voice, really. In, in uh, and then coming here and working with American actors, listening to the American voice required some tweaking along the way. But uh, we're we're pleased with where it's got to. What are you holding? His kingdom. He's holding all of his kingdom there. Oh, so tiny. In miniature. A seed. The seed has gone bad. The strain has been damaged. It won't grow. Drop it. No, no. Open your hand. I order you to unclench your hand. Release the plains. Release the mountains. Like this. There. See, it's nothing but dust. Well, um, I didn't realize it was going to be as difficult as it was, actually. I, I, I just loved the play, but I hadn't really thought about my part. So um, I love the, the last, the transition into the last scene, and that long scene, and, and uh, so it was really... I still haven't f completely figured out how to do her, but, but I'm looking forward to the next few months to try to work it out. The audience there on Sunday, so diverse, and young kids were there too, just sitting in the front and loving this. I love the young kids, Ex you know, except it's really funny because Andrea in the beginning when she holds up no texting, the kids are always texting, so she, you know, um, it, but they purposefully put them in the front. They're great laughers, and they, they yeah, everybody, they, I mean, I don't think we've had an audience that hasn't just stood up and screamed at the end and that's so sweet it's just and um, i just phoned my wife and i said darling i have made my broadway debut and it's a marker it's not what i aimed for and it's nothing i ever really seriously thought about but ever since i've been coming to new york for example to do press junkets for films and stuff i've looked around the broadway scene and the restaurants and the theaters and there's such a uh, there's, it's a village there's this beautiful, enlightened club of audience members and participants in the projects that I wanted to be a part of. In a dream way, since I was 15, when I used to listen to a lot of Broadway musical theater back in the mid-60s when I was at high school, next to the Beatles, I was listening to Angela Lansbury 
or Tommy Steele in half a sixpence, you know, or um, Zero Mostel in, in Fiddler. So I feel I'm pretty well seasoned in that kind of energy. And to be able to bring a weird and wonderful play like Exit the King into that arena has been just so special. Will you miss me? Dear good little son, take care of me. If some small sacrifice is needed, dry up and kill off the entire world. <laughs> Let everyone die so that I may live eternally. Alone, if needs be, in some limitless desert, I can cope with the solitude. I'll have the memory of other people and I will genuinely miss them. <laughs> I can handle the transparent immensity of the void. Better to miss than be missed. Not that anyone ever really is. Missed. Two-time Tony Award winner Matthew Broderick is returning to Broadway to co-star opposite Jonathan Cake, Stephen Weber, and Anna Natalie in Roundabout Theatre Company's new production of Christopher Hampton's play The Philanthropist, which is directed by David Grinley. It will open at the American Airlines Theatre on April 26th. We recently caught up with Matthew and company to talk about the production. You, you, with English plays, um, uh, I'm very fortunate that I seem to find American actors who are absolutely appropriate for the roles that, 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 that we're asking them to play. So when Todd Haynes and I discussed doing the production, there was obviously quite a short, short list of who would be appropriate to play the lead character of Philip, who is quite a reserved, rather um, uh, quiet and apparently passive character. Uh, and Matthew, particularly in the work he did in the film Election, was a perfect choice and fortunately we sent him the play and he responded positively to it and uh, uh, he was the first uh, um, piece in the puzzle and, and that then led us to, I've worked with Stephen Webber before, I thought he'd be superb to play the louche Don, uh, called Don, uh, and Anna Maidley was in the original production that we did in 2005, she, she was magic as Celia and it's been a delight to be able to bring her over here. And then Jennifer Mudge's Araminta is very, very sexy and, and rather naughty, and so it's great her having her on board. And Tate is very earnest and be perfect as a student, John. Uh, and Sam Spool, we're amazed. You know, Sam Spool is the most qualified of the actresses we have. Uh, and she doesn't even speak, and she went to Juilliard. And so we're, the, the, the caliber of the cast we have is just absolutely sensational. So we're, we're very fortunate, and particularly Jonathan Cake playing Braham as well. You know, that was a real coup that he was prepared to, to play this part because it's uh, a very particular part and a very particular British casting, and it's perfect that he's able to do it. Well, uh, the show's about all these very insular English academics at uh, an Oxford or Cambridge university kind of university and uh, and I play a teacher of English who is uh, very well liked very well respected but his story is that he's really a chronic underachiever who's who's achieved the heights of underachievement and uh, he's perfected it he's perfected a, a technique of idleness in a way and that he's, uh, he's quite happy with his life or so he says out loud but the whole play is populated with uh, people who are almost emotional misfits in a way. They, in spite of their great intellect and their ability to pontificate and expound on various theories, they are uh, kind of emotional cowards and uh, are incredibly vulnerable as a result. Anytime the real world enters into their little hermetic life, they panic and all sorts of uh, hell is cut loose. And uh, it's, it's actually quite funny and I'd say fairly profound. I play Celia in the show, who is a postgraduate student at the university. Uh, she's up for an intellectual debate. She has quite a, a sort of biting wit about her. And um, she's in a relationship with Philip, who's, who's very gentle and sweet and never wants to hurt someone's feelings and uh, doesn't rise to provocation in the way she wants him to. They're quite, they're quite, um, well, she's quite in conflict with him. I don't know that he's in conflict with her. And um, there's a lot of fun in that relationship to be had. He's a real rock to her. So it's very moving and very funny and very frustrating all at the same time. So I play the uh, novelist Braham Head who uh, is a very successful author, who's the only uh, member of this um, 
group of people who's not a uh, part of the university setting. He's not an academic, he's not a student, and he comes into this dinner party and sort of sets this kind of personality bomb off. He's a peacock who wants to leave no feather unfluttered uh, or undisplayed, and he's got his eye very firmly set on Celia, who is uh, the uh, fiancé of Matthew Broderick's character, Philip. Um, but like many characters who come into contact with the philanthropist, he, he couldn't have expected the strange fate that awaits him. <laughs> I'll say no more than that. I play um, a professor at, at Oxford, or, or a school like Oxford, I think it says in the play. And uh, um, he, um, he's an, an expert in words and how words are used, a philologist, whatever that is. And um, uh, he's a very uh, kind of, he's very friendly, and yet in a very friendly way says, Sometimes very things that upset people a great deal. Um, so it's kind of the misanthrope, but if the misanthrope, rather than being nasty to everybody, was nice to everybody, but it still drives everybody crazy. Well, this is my second time at the roundabout, and I and with Todd Hames, and I think I've also done several readings there too. So I always I always liked working there. Um, and I like Todd, I trust him, so when he sends something, I, I take it seriously and I read it. And it has a nice, uh, all the people at Roundabout seem to, it's just a good feeling. It doesn't, it's not a, it feels like a comfortable, solid, uh, uh, well-run place. You know, you feel sort of taken care of there. I think it's, and I love their work. I love the shows that they do. So I'm very um, excited to be, part of their season this year. The new musical, The Toxic Avenger, which is just open at New World Stages, is based on the 1985 cult classic film. The musical features a book by Joe DiPietro, music and lyrics by Bon Jovi's David Bryan, and is directed by Tony Award winner John Rando. The cast is led by the outrageous Nancy Opel. All my life I've been a pacifist. Right now you really got me pissed. Something didn't kill me, I don't know why There's a new Melvin in town And it's time for him to get on down It's gonna hurt like hell and you're gonna die Maybe you better scram Or I'll cop you up like a holiday ham I'm gonna kick, 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 kick your ass I'm gonna kick, 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 kick your ass I'm gonna kick, 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 kick your ass It's gonna be a blast it's great, you know, we've, we've gone through the preview process, so, you know, which is really honing and honing the craft and making it good, and, you know, and tonight we set it free. So, um, it's great to see people laugh, you know, I mean, I love comedies. You know, being in a rock band, you wouldn't think that, but I had more comedy records than rock and roll records growing up. So when Joe and I got a chance to write comedy, I mean, he writes comedy, but I can do that. You know, the, the funny lyrics and then, you know, bringing in the story, jokes I got to get in, it was, you know, it's funny, it's great. What's been the best part of the experience for you with working on the show? Finally being in New York. You know what I mean? I've been working with Joe DiPietro. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he said that he's the best. He's been loving it. He's been loving it. That's all I ever said. Yeah, no, you know, Toxic Avenger is its own thing, and we just wanted to make it into a big, rocking, really, really funny musical. So uh, we've been happy about that. So when the idea came to do this, why did you say, yeah, I can do this or want to do it? Well, uh, both uh, David Bryan and I are from New Jersey. And uh, when I was approached by a producer, Gene Cheever, to do it, I knew the movie, and I immediately thought theater of the ridiculous. I thought a small musical where people play multiple roles and really sort of catch the uh, trauma spirit. And uh, I said, you know, we can't put the exact replica of the movie on stage, but if you let the, take the us take the premise and run with it and make it our own thing, I think we can do that. And so God bless Lloyd Kaufman. He agreed to it. You make my heart
she's blind, so uh, that, there's a lot of comedy to be mined there. Uh, I also like she's the only one of the few characters who's not like wink wink. She doesn't know uh, that the joke's on her, so that's fun, especially because you can't look at people, so it already makes you sort of spacey to begin with. But it's just a lot of physical comedy, which I love, which I'm not going to show you, but I have bruises all over my body, like all well, over. <laughs> but uh, it's so much. Fun. I'm having a blast and it's just playing with this company I mean you guys like get shot out of a can and the second this show begins and it's over you know almost two hours later non-stop yeah yeah it's we are by the time we climb up the steps at the end and say Jersey for that last final time Nick Cordero is holding my hand physically up because I can't we're so exhausted but it's really good because we can eat whatever we want um, which is the payoff and then you know there's nothing sweeter than plopping on your couch watching Celebrity Apprentice knowing you just worked really hard. Well, I play a lot of roles. <laughs> a lot of roles. And it, go, and it all happens very quickly. It's a, it's a magical show. It's a true piece of theater that, uh, that people can, can appreciate for its craft, for its magic, uh, for its impact, um, for the craft involved in creating it. Uh, it's a very kinetic show. And uh, it just moves and it moves and it moves, and, and it's kind of a magical event. It's like a it's like a magic carousel. You know, I mean, the humor, Jody Pietro's humor is just, I mean, it's infectious. I mean, when you read it and you're like, I know exactly how to play that because it's it's on paper, it's funny. So it's not it's not one of those things that you have to you have to make funny. It already is. So it's that's part of the draw. And then I mean, David Bryan, the music is. It's so fun to sing. And also, I mean, working with Nancy Opal and John Rando, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, really. I'm just a dirty girl. I'm gonna rule the world. I was born to run this state. Boy, she was born to run. She's got a lot of love in her. So I'm gonna be governor. The on the take candidate. On the take, she's on the take. I play, I play good and evil. I play the mayor of the town who's very bad, and I play his mother, the Toxic Avengers mother, who's pretty good. <laughs> um, anyway, and, and they are also, how do you say it? Would they be nemeses? Yes, they would be nemeses. Um, and um, so they have a chance to actually meet and, and c confront each other. But the show itself, it's about a guy who gets thrown in a vat of toxic goo and becomes a mutant superhero and hilarious consequences follow. I think that's a really a great way to put it. It is a trip. I mean, not, I mean, hallucinogenic at times even. Um, and that's the whole, that was the whole point. You know, it's a great story. I mean, you know, the original idea was simply the idea that this guy who's a toxic guy who's been dipped in this horrible thing could be a superhero. To have the misfit, nerdy guy become a superhero and fall in love with a blind girl and have a, a blind girl save the day. It's a, just the wackiest, wonderful story. So that's what was really important to me. And, and yeah, we worked very hard. The designers, especially, I'm really helped by my set designer, Beowulf Borat, my costume designer, David Willard, the lights, Ken, Ken Posner and his partner, Joel. I mean, just a fantastic, you know, a fantastic group. John Dodds, who did the mask and the amazing arms and legs being ripped off. It was just really, really lucky. Not to mention my cast. I love what you, what you do the best is your casting. Yeah. And I mean, look who you have here, particularly Nancy Opal. Nancy, who's you know an old friend, we've worked on many shows together, and she actually did the, did the reading of this show before I became involved. And she told Joe, Joe, you gotta get Rando to do this. And then that's when he called. Um, and she's a treasure. And you know, we just. I just love working with her, and she's really a treasure. I mean, she's really her vocally, comically, uh, just, and she understands how to how a new musical works and how to help build it. Um, so, yeah, it's a gas working with her. Uh, it's well, it's really funny. I mean, it's really funny on the page. You know what I mean? So it was it was about making the staging sort of do justice to that, and and. Uh, and I think we did that, you know, and, and it's topical and there's a love story involved and there's the struggle of this character, Melvin Ferd III, who, who just wants to be seen 
you know, for who he is inside and and um, and um, yeah. So. Talk about when he becomes Toxie. I mean, talk about the transition when you fall into the vab. Yeah. You come out so fast and you're right. totally transformed into something else. Yeah. Well, it's I have about five people backstage who are standing. It's funny because I'm I'm in the barrel upside down while they're holding me suspended and I'm looking at these five people just getting ready to tear my clothes off and put the muscle suit on and it's 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 a carefully choreographed sequence. So. So uh, yeah, we ran it more than a few times just to make sure everything was was where it should be. But that time issue is what the audience really gets a, a kick out of because like, how did that happen? And and like so many of the other changes in the show, the costume changes, funnily enough, are are a big part of of the the pace, the momentum of the show. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Yeah.